The Mindful Life Practice. Basically anything that can hook around your shoulder foot and lengthen your hamstrings. So you can modify with um, a sweater, a scarf, or you can just use your hands if you have that hamstring flexibility. Okay? So this class, it is generally um, level two. It's a bit more advanced. We've started working on um, an arm balance called eight angle, and we're going to be carrying on with that today. Oh, someone else is joining. Um, what was I going to say? Please take this at your own level. I encourage that all the time throughout yoga. Someone else again, Christina. Awesome. We're up at tiny. Um, please go at your own pace. Take your own level. Um, know that everything I'm going to offer is just like an option. <laughs> um, and uh, I think it's especially important in these like powerful classes since we're doing it over Zoom and like I can't see um, your practice and I can't be there um, that you're just being really aware of like you know, having a skillful awareness of your own limitations and what feels good and what does not feel good, yeah? Cool, okay, come down onto your back. Um, we're gonna start into a hip opener. We're gonna start in a butterfly. So your soles and feet are together and your knees are opening wide and you're gonna rest your palms on your belly. And then just take some deep breaths in and out and settle into stillness. So the intention in our yoga practice is to link our movement with our breath and our breath with our movement. And while we will be doing some challenging poses today, just remember that the sign of an advanced yoga practice, it's not being able to do crazy things with your body. Right, the sign of an advanced yoga practice is like being able to stay off your phone for 60 minutes. So if your phone is still on, just try to flip it off, try to set it aside. Let this be an hour that is fully for you. Embodying whatever quality you want to throughout your practice strength or, or compassion or patience, whatever that might be. Let's take our palms onto the outsides of the thighs. Just draw the knees into the chest. Give yourself a little hug and rock side to side. And then place your left foot on the mat. Place your right foot on the mat and press your right palm into your right thigh. So this is your... Um, thread the needle. You can stay here or you might lift your left leg off interlacing your palms around your left thigh or your left shin. So target parts of the body we're working on. We are moving towards eight angle pose which is an arm balance. This is going to require hip and hamstring flexibility. It's going to require core strength and shoulder opening. Take one more breath in this thread the needle. And then land your left foot. You're gonna take your peace fingers, hook them around your right big toe and come into a half happy baby. So you're taking your right knee out to the side. You are drawing and pulling through the foot. Kind of getting into the hip crease. And then take one more breath. And then let's release the right foot. And then switch the opposite way. So take your left ankle, flex it. Push your left palm into your left thigh. 
And then maybe you deepen by lifting up and interlacing the palms and just kind of feeling what's going on in your hips today. One more breath. And then release that foot, hook your peace fingers around your big toe, and then start to get into the left hip crease, this half happy baby. You can always deepen this stretch by lengthening the leg out, or just leave it bent if you're good with that. And then take one more breath. Land your left foot back down, grab hold of your yoga strap or your scarf or whatever, and you're going to lengthen up through your right leg, hook your strap around your right sole of foot, and then either keep your left leg bent or lengthen the leg long. So this is a few things. We're forward folding at the hip joint. We're getting an extension through the back of the right leg. And just be gentle, be easy. Don't be like trying to reach a goal here, right? This is our first hamstring opener of the day or maybe the week or whatever. I see someone else in the waiting room. So just go easy on it. There's Lisa. And then take one more breath. And then we're gonna take this right sole of foot over to the right. So now we're getting a inner groin stretch. Your strap is in your right palm and then your left palm is on your hip. Okay, inhale, take your right foot all the way up and now switch your strap so that it's in your left palm and you're gonna open your leg over to the Left. And I have to move over a little bit because I'm hitting the wall. So now you're taking an IT band stretch and it's a little bit of a twist. And let's just stay for three breaths. And then come all the way back up through center and then we'll take the stretch on the opposite side. So lift your left leg up. Lengthen through the leg. So sorry, I need to quit my WhatsApp. I am the absolute worst. I just told all of you guys to turn off your phones. <laughs> How do I even quit my WhatsApp? I'm new to this. Okay, walk out. Good. Take one more breath with your leg extended. There we go. You don't need any of that. And then open up into your groin stretch. Okay, so left leg over to the side. Strap is in the left palm. Your right palm can be an anchor. Make sure you have enough space to go deep into this stretch and then take one more inhale. And then take the left leg all the way back up. Switch your strap into the right palm and then take the left leg across the body and get your twist and IT band stretch. And stay for three breaths. And then come all the way back through center. And then take your strap to the side and then just take the knees back into the chest, palms onto the backs of the thighs. Let's do a little rock up and come all the way into your table. Now from your table, turn your palms onto your mat so that they're out to the sides. So you're down like this. And then maybe you're good here. Maybe you wanna take the palms all the way back so that fingers are pointing towards your knees. And we're just gonna take a few rocks back and forth. So we're getting into the wrists. Um, super important when we're working on our hands in yoga that we're distributing our weight evenly throughout the palms, throughout the fingers. Um, a lot of us tend to dump our weight into our wrists. I'm one of them. And this is what leads to wrist injuries. So especially as we're doing arm balances today, just be cognizant of that, be aware. And then take one more. And then come all the way back through center. Wrap your palms back to neutral. And just on our table, I want you to feel the difference between just having a lazy table, just being here, and actively engaging through the arms. So you're like 
wrapping the upper arms towards each other. The eyes of the elbows are pointing forward. You're spreading through the palms and feel that engagement, right? There's lazy table and then there's like an engaged and strong table and they're different. Tuck the toes under. You're gonna lift the knees to hover two or three inches above the mat. And then I want you to shift your hips back in space. Keep them low, invite a length through your spine. Give it three, two, and then one, stretch all the way back and then just rock your way. Bending through the knees, nice little gentle down dog. Bend through both knees, gaze forward and step your feet up to meet your hands. Take a breath in, halfway lift. Take a breath out, fold. And then inhale, sweep both palms up towards the sky, fingertips reach up overhead. And then exhale your palms into your heart center. All right, let's start to move. Inhale both palms up towards the sky, upward mountain. And then exhale into your fold. Take your inhale to halfway lift. And then exhale your way back down. We're gonna find a strong plank. So push through the palms, spread through the fingers, step your feet back, find your plank, core engaged. So I have to tell you, I am, um, I generally avoid teaching these really advanced poses in yoga studios. And the reason why is because I really don't want people to come to their first yoga class and like be super discouraged when they can't accomplish the pose. Um, if you need to lower your knees, go ahead. If you're okay with the knees lifted, just stay here taking a few deep breaths. So I really like to drive home and emphasize, empathize, em emphasize <laughs> the point that the pose is not the goal, right? We're experiencing the build up to and the release from a pose, not accomplishing the pose itself. All right, let's go back and draw down dog. I think I held you in that plank for long enough. Take an inhale, take an exhale, and then we're gonna actually rock all the way forward back into our plank. And then slowly lower elbows drawn back, inhaling, lifting up to your up dog, and then exhale, shifting back to your down dog. Okay, so that is a pretty advanced vinyasa. Um, I know there's some people here that are a bit more beginner to yoga, so I'm gonna break down what you're gonna do, okay? So one more time, let's come forward into plank. And if you're more beginner or if you, um, you know, are still building up your core and arm strength, I want you to land your knees onto the mat, okay? Slowly lower, elbows drawing back, your whole body is gonna lower onto the mat. And then take an inhale, lift your heart up, and then exhale to lower, and then shift through a table, and then find your down dog, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. There's no better or worse version of just where you're at today. Okay, let's take one more vinyasa. So come all the way forward. You choose option one or option two. Lowering down, lifting up, and then shifting back to your down dog. Okay, bend through the knees, gaze forward, hop or step feet to the front of the mat. Inhale, half lift, exhale, fold. Bend through the knees, chair. Take a breath in, and then you're gonna exhale forward, fold. Inhale, half lift, exhale your way down, take your vinyasa, or just move directly to your down dog. On your inhale, take your right foot up towards the sky, and then draw your right knee in, step your right foot between the palms. Whoa, I'm a bit wobbly. <laughs> inhale up into your crescent lunge, and then exhale your way back down, and then move through a vinyasa. So we're slowly starting to warm up the body. We'll take the opposite side. Left leg lifts up. Draw your left knee in, step your left foot between the palms. Inhale, all the way up. And then exhale your way back down, vinyasa. Come all the way up to your down dog. This time we're gonna kick it up a tiny little bit of a notch. So take your right leg up towards the sky. I'm already losing my breath, this is hard. <laughs> So either you draw your right knee in and you step it forward, or you bend through your left knee, gaze forward, and you hop your left foot between the palms. You land onto your right toes. Inhale up, and then exhale your way back down. 
and then float through a vinyasa. Let's take it on the opposite side. Okay, left leg lifts up. Bend through the right knee, hop. Inhale up. Exhale your way back down. Vinyasa. So one more round. You can either step forward or you can join me in that hopping. Right foot lifts, gaze forward, hop. Inhale up. Exhale down. Vinyasa. Last one. Left leg lifts up. Bend through your left knee. Hop the right foot forward, breathe in. And then exhale lower. Come back to your plank. Push the ground away. Hold your strong plank. Let's take it for five, for four, three, two. And then on one, just shift back to your down dog. <sighs> okay, right leg lifts up. We're taking one more little warm up flow. Draw your right knee in. Step your right foot between your palms. Inhale up to your crescent lunge. And then exhale open to your warrior two. As you inhale, reverse your warrior. And then as you exhale, you're gonna windmill your palms to the mat and frame the foot. Okay, keep your left palm where it is. Take your right palm up towards the sky. And then we're gonna come into a side plank. Okay, so roll onto the other edge of the left foot. Walk your right foot back. Maybe you're good just here. Maybe you can step your right foot back. And then maybe you can lift the right leg all the way up. Stay in your Vashistasana. Three, two, and then one. Let's move back to a down dog. Maybe you go through a vinyasa, maybe you skip it. And then take your left leg up towards the sky. Draw your left knee in. Inhale all the way up. And then exhale, open. Breath in, reverse your warrior. Breath out, come all the way back. Windmill palms to the mat, frame the foot. Now keep your right palm where it is. Roll onto the outer edge of the right foot. Take your left palm up towards the sky. Maybe you're good here. If you step back, maybe you lift the foot. Give me three, two, and then one. Take your vinyasa, and then let's all take a mandatory child's pose, okay? Coming onto the knees, sitting the hips back, resting the forehead, and then just catching the breath, maybe grabbing a sip of water. Oh, I see someone else in the waiting room. So nice. <sighs> okay. So know that if you want to stay in child's pose for the rest of the practice, you are more than welcome to stay here. Okay? Let's just take a few deep breaths. And then I want you to imagine that there's like a marble in front of your nose. And you're gonna slide that marble all the way to the front of the mat. And then we're gonna take a couple of back bends, okay? So first one, palms alongside the hips. You guys know this one. Inhale, lift your heart up. So your pelvis is heavy and your belly is light and stay for three and stay for two. And then one, let's lower down and land a cheek. Okay, second one. I want you to come onto your elbows. And then we're gonna take a little bit of a half bow. So you're gonna kick your left heel up into your bottom. I'm gonna take my left arm across the mat, reach the right arm back, and then see if you can connect right palm to your left ankle and you kind of open your heart. So please be mindful and aware of how your body is feeling. I know that there are some beginners in the room and if this does not suit your spine, then back off. Okay, you can go back to the first back bend. It really doesn't matter. The, pull, the pose is not the goal. It's like our intention for today. The pose is not the goal. Okay, let's release that. And then back bend the opposite way. So right arm goes across, left palm reaches. Maybe you kick back a little bit, open through the spine. Three, two, and then one, release. All right, let's take a tiny little shoulder opener. So extend your right arm on the mat. Start shifting and rolling onto the right shoulder. Land your right cheek. And maybe you also lift the left arm up. 
Might even feel nice to reach back. And then let's take that shoulder opener on the opposite side. So you're rolling around. I don't even know what this pose is called. I think I call it like flipped wing thing in my notes. Come all the way back through center. And then we're gonna get into the main meat of our flow. <laughs> so come up to your down dog. If you've been practicing vinyasa with me, um, you know this flow, this core flow we've been working on. First things first, if it's too much for you up in the down dog, just come back to your table and do this opposite elbow to knee thing. I think you guys are all familiar with it, okay? If you're good with me, we're gonna come up to the down dog, take your right leg up towards the sky, bend through your right knee and stack your hips. Now maybe stay here, maybe you take your heart forward into a plank, you flip, you land on your right toes, and then you lift your heart up. This is your wild thing. Come all the way back to your three-legged dog, right knee into the chest, hold it here for three, for two, and then for one, you're gonna extend your right leg out, landing onto the outer edge of the right foot, land onto your left heel, and take your left palm up towards the sky. So this is your rock star. All right, let's land the left palm. One more thing, take the right knee through center, side plank, you can have the right foot grounded, you can have it stacked. Something I am working on is I'm hooking my fingers around my big toe and I'm lengthening the leg up towards the sky. If you're there with me, three, two, and then one, take your right foot all the way forward. Oh, deep breath. <laughs> Land onto your left heel, right palm to the inside of the right foot, left palm lifts up towards the sky. All right, we are in extended side angle right now. You can come up onto the elbow. You can, if you want, bend through the right elbow. See if you can wrap the right arm underneath the thigh. Take the palms, connect, find your mind, take deep breaths. And then you're gonna release that grip, lengthen through your right leg, come all the way up to stand. Wrap your left arm around your body like you're coming into this half bind thing. And then you're gonna reach forward at your hips and then take your right arm to the inside of the right leg. Okay, so this is your triangle with the bind. If you don't like this bind, just come back up to neutral. Doesn't really matter. I just find sometimes taking a bind is like a new way of exploring something. And then let's start shifting weight onto the right foot and the right fingertips and try your Ardha Chandrasana, your half moon and you don't have to come here, okay? If you would rather stay back in your triangle, then stay back in your triangle. All right, let's unwrap that left arm. And now what you're gonna do is take both of your palms to heart center and tilt your weight. So now you're in a Veer Vajrasana three, you're in a warrior three, so you're closing your hips. Hips are level, stay for three for two, and then for one, hinge your heart forward, walk your palms back to your feet. So palms are framing your foot, you're taking now what's called standing splits, you're lifting your left leg higher, 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 this pose is my nemesis, I hate it, but we have to do the poses we hate or we will never grow. Um, if you want to play around with hopping into handstand, please be careful. I also don't like doing this, <laughs> but you're gonna push your ground away and then maybe just do a little hop. I cannot do handstand. I'm only doing this because someone recently challenged me to do a handstand and I thought maybe I'd practice it a little bit. <laughs> Take one more hop and then step your left foot all the way back and then inhale your palms up towards the sky. <sighs> okay, let's take our palms into our heart center, lift your elbows, and then twist your left elbow to land onto your right thigh. So you're twisting towards the standing leg. Now I'm gonna give you an option here. You can stay right here, all right? I don't think we did this on the weekend, um, but we did do it in Power Vinyasa a couple weeks ago. If you wanna explore a bind with this pose, you're gonna reach your left arm down towards the mat and reach your right arm up, okay? And then maybe you can wrap the left arm underneath the right thigh, and maybe you can wrap the right arm all the way back and this is your twisted bound 
Um, low lunge, I guess. Gaze over the right shoulder. Take one more breath. And then unwind back. We're gonna come back into this hands in prayer thing. How are we doing? Things I can't even see your faces. I don't know. Step your left foot forward to meet your right. Twisted chair. You can stay in your chair or you might lift onto your toes, land your palms on the mat, connect your left elbow and your right elbow to your body, and then start tilting your way into a supported Vakasana. You're in a twisted Vakasana, sorry, Parsva Vakasana. <laughs> Take one more breath. And then we're gonna come all the way up. And then just take your feet wide here. Bend through the knees and sit the hips back on your spot. Take a couple of breaths. Stillness. One more inhale. One more exhale. Roll your body weight back so you can land onto your bottom. Take your arms up. Legs up. This is your Navasana. All right, so I have something to tell you about this pose. As you might have seen on my Instagram, did you know that this pose is called a teaser in Pilates? I did not know that. My friend tagged me in a teaser challenge. She's a Pilates teacher. And I texted her, I was like, what's a teaser? I don't have one. What else can I do? And it turns out a teaser is this. This is called Navasana boat. I also don't like this pose. <laughs> Take one more breath. And then we're going to float backwards. This is Ardha Navasana. You're gazing at your toes. Your core is engaged. Hold here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. And then on one lower, all the way down, knees into the chest. Interlace your palms behind the back of your skull. Curl up. Crisscross, tap your right elbow to your left knee. That's one. Crisscross to two. Let's go all the way to eight. Three, four, five, six, seven. On eight, you're going to hold here. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Cross eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. One, come all the way up. Take your knees wide for a second. Take your palms onto the inside of your legs. Lift your body up. I want you to pretend that you're coming into crow on the ground. You're pushing your hands into the earth. This is like your crow upside down. Three, two, and then one. Lower down. <sighs> okay, we are gonna come all the way into a chair. And how are you gonna get to that chair? I want you to take your hands onto the backs of the thighs. See if you can walk and roll the spine. And eventually, you're going to try to hop up without even touching the ground, just like that. And if you need to touch the ground, that's OK. You're still a good person. One more breath. And then exhale, come forward. OK, let's hang out in our forward fold for a few breaths. If you want to grip your palms to opposite elbows, go ahead. If you want to take your peace fingers to wrap around your big toes, go ahead. You might also thread your palms face up so that the wrists are underneath the toes. Give your toes a little massage for the wrists. Take one more breath. And then we are going to do the opposite side. Okay, so inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold, plant the palms, step your feet back, find your strong plank, hold in your plank, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and then one vinyasa. All the way back to your down dog. Take your left foot up towards the sky. Bend through your left knee, stack the hips. Maybe stay here, maybe you ripple all the way forward, flip your dog. Lift your heart, you're on your tippy toes now. Take a deep breath. Come all the way back through center, knee into the chest. Hold it in stillness for three, for two, and then for one, slide your left foot out, land on the other end of the left foot. Take your right palm up towards the sky, rock star. Three, 
two, and then one, rolling all the way. Okay, we're coming into our Vashi Stasana, our side plank. So your foot might be on the ground. Maybe you're hooking near the big toe, lengthening the leg up. Three, two, and then one. We're gonna step the left one all the way forward. Nice work. Right onto the right heel. Come all the way up into your warrior two. Oh no, I lied. Come back down, extended side angle. <laughs> okay, so you might just be here with your arm extended. Maybe your elbow's up here. If you want to go for that bind, we're going to bend through the left elbow, wrap the arms around, hook the palms together, gaze over the shoulder. One more breath. Unwind that, and now come all the way up, lengthen through the leg, hook the right arm around the back body, breath in, hinge forward, left arm alongside the left leg. So if this bind is not working for you, feel free to unwind. If you're okay in the bind, if you want the balance, we are gonna rock forward, land the foot, land the palm, to get into this standing balance. Now I have never done transitions of like open hip to close hip, so half moon to warrior three. I was told by my first yoga teacher training that it's like dangerous for your hips. Um, anyway, there's since been research to show that it's totally okay for us to move our hips in like all directions. So we're gonna move our hips into our warrior three. Okay, so you're gonna release that, lower your right hip, take both hips to be level, and then maybe your palms come into heart center. I'm gonna move a little further back because my head is in this plant. <laughs> And then take your palms onto your mat, walk your palms back, find your standing splits, lift your right leg as high as you can. Maybe you can grip your palms onto the ankle, three, two, and then one. And if you want to take those handstand hops, firmly plant your hands, lengthen through your arms, pop the foot up. Know that it's okay if you can't do it. I can't do it either. It doesn't matter. Just have fun. And then we're going to hop all the way back when you're done. Come all the way up into your crescent lunge. You got this. Hands at your heart center. Breath in, lift the elbows, and then twist your right elbow onto your left thigh. Oh, oh my God, my balance is off today. Power the outside is hard. <laughs> if you want to extend the right arm down and if you want to wrap the arms together, go ahead, finding your bind, gazing over the left shoulder, or you can just have hands at heart center. And then let's unwind all the way back, taking our palms back to heart center. Step your right foot forward. Okay, so you can just stay in this twisted chair. That's a great place to be. Or lifting off of the toes, planting the palms. You try to make a shelf like your chaturanga arms. And then shift your weight forward into this twisted bakasana, finding your balance. One more inhale, one more exhale. And then come all the way back. Oh, and then let's go into our squat, okay? So toes are out, heels are in, sit your bottom down, take your palms into heart center. So you can stay here. If you wanna take a little bit of a um, bind and a twist, we're gonna take our right arm out, left arm up, and then maybe you weave the arms together and gaze over the left shoulder. Unwind the arms, and then we'll twist the opposite way. So left arm lengthens, right arm lengthens. Weave together, interlace, gaze over the right shoulder. Three, two, and then one. Come all the way back. All right, if you want to come into crow, now is your chance. Hands on the mat, bottom lifts up. Line up your knees with your armpits and then kind of shift your weight forward, gazing forward, maybe one toe lifts and then the other. If you are not in crow, you're going to come with me. We're going to come into this low plank and we're going to do some tricep push-ups. So elbows drawn back and then up, okay? So this is building your arm strength for one day your crow. And if you're happy playing in crow, let's just take five more reps. Three, Two, 
and then one, and then we're all gonna shift back onto the heels and take another child pose, take a sip of water. And then come up to seated. Okay, so I try as much as possible to avoid us using yoga props in these classes because I know that not everyone has them at home. Um, I'm going to show you this pose. It's called Lal Asana. <laughs> and I always do it with yoga blocks because I find that it's like really hard for me to like lift my butt up in the air without this extra leverage. Um, so if you don't have blocks, you can still do it on the ground. I just find it much easier. So you can either have your legs crossed or if lotus legs, is something that you know how to do, crossing your ankles in, go ahead. I find that that bind helps keep me zipped together. And you're gonna place your palms on your mat or on your blocks, or if you have some books around, you can also use books. Okay, you're gonna push the ground away and see if you can lift your body up to float. And if you're like laughing out loud, being like, ha, what is she talking about? Don't worry, this is how I felt for like years and years in yoga. Comes with time, be patient, wait for the body to open. One day you'll get there. One day you can levitate. Trust me, didn't think I'd be able to do this 10 years ago. <laughs> Take one more breath. And then let's come all the way back down. Unwind your legs. And we're gonna do my least favorite pose in yoga ever, which is a wide-legged forward fold. Okay, so taking a breath in, palms can be behind you, spine can lengthen up. And then maybe you can start to creep your body forward and then release your head. <sighs> Take three breaths. One more inhale. One more exhale. Okay, come all the way back up. Let's bring the legs back in. Bring yourself back into a plank. Take a vinyasa or just shift straight up to down dog. We're almost getting towards our peak pose, I promise. Right leg lifts up. Bend through the right knee. Flip your dog again, wild thing. Slowly unwind. Take your right knee into the chest. Core plank, hover here for three, for two, and then one rock star. So same move as before, right leg lifts out. Lift your left arm up towards the sky, take a breath. Come all the way back, side plank. Maybe you're working with me, and maybe you're just in a normal side plank, it doesn't matter. Take your right leg all the way forward, right palm to the inside of the right foot, come onto the left knee. Okay, we're gonna do one last little bit of hip opening. So maybe you're down on the elbows, maybe you're up on the hands. If you wanna come into a quad stretch, kicking the right, sorry, left foot back, Gripping your right palm to your left foot, go ahead. Deep stretch for the quad. Listen to your body. If it tells you to back off, back off. Okay, and then release the foot. And then we're gonna come into a pigeon. So we're gonna take the right leg across. Right shin lays across the width of the mat. Breathe in. And then exhale your body forward. I think most of you guys have done yoga with me before and you know that there's other pigeon modifications, right? If, um, if this doesn't suit you, you could be on your back and thread the needle, which is the very first yoga pose we did today, okay? Take one more breath here. And then take your palms underneath your shoulders, tuck your left foot, lift all the way up, draw your right knee in again and then step your right foot between the palms. Okay, right palm to the inside of the right foot, land onto the left, heel, inhale up. We're back in extended side angle. We're gonna do this one more time. If you wanna wrap into your bind, go ahead, or you might just stay here, okay? And then if you wanna come up into your bird of paradise, which some of us have been working on, if you have the bind, you're gonna step your left foot forward, balance your weight on your left foot, lift all the way up, and then extend your leg, three, two, and then one, step it all the way down. Left foot steps all the way back. Unwind, lift your palms up, big stretch. 
And then exhale your palms back down. Shift back to down dog or vinyasa. And then we'll just take through the opposite side. Okay, so left leg lifts. Bend through your left knee, stack the hips. Lift your heart. And then come all the way forward. Left knee into the chest, hold it, core plank, three, two, and then one. Extend through your left leg. Take your right arm up towards the sky, rock star. <sighs> Take the right palm back down. One more thing, you got this. Extend through the left leg. Three, two, and then one. Step your left foot forward. Oh, okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is that lizard. Land onto the right knee. Left palm to the inside. Maybe you're down onto the elbows. And then maybe you wanna come into that quad stretch. And if you have the quad stretch, release it. And let's wiggle the left leg across the width of the mat. Take a breath in. And then exhale, come forward. And take one more breath. all the way back. Tuck your back toes, lift your left knee, step your left foot all the way forward. Come into your extended side angle. So maybe you're right here, maybe your left arm is down, maybe you wrap it all the way around. And then let's take a hop forward with our right foot and find yourself coming oh, up into your bird of paradise on this side, knowing it's okay that if your balance is off, right, you're human. Don't be so hard on yourself. And then come all the way back. Step your left foot down, step your right foot back. Let's elongate the spine, take a big stretch. Okay, if you wanna take one last vinyasa, go ahead. I'm gonna skip it. <laughs> We're all gonna congregate back and seated. <sighs> okay, so we have been working towards this peak pose. Um, eight, eight angle pose. Um, this is a pose that I actually didn't think I was capable of until um, two weeks ago when my friend challenged me to do it on Instagram. I think he thought that I wasn't able to do it and um, surprised him, I surprised even myself. Um, so the point is, be open-minded, give it a try. Um, also, don't be too hard on yourself if uh, you don't get it today, right? It's just a pose. Um, okay, so leave your left leg on the mat for now. You're gonna lift your right foot up, hook your arms around your bottom of your shin, and just kind of rock this imaginary baby. <laughs> so you might be good right here, or you might wrap your full arm around the leg and then rock the baby like this. So you might stay here. I'm sorry if you guys were in my class on Saturday and you've heard all of these metaphors again. I get them all from kids yoga. <laughs> my kids yoga teacher training. The next thing you're gonna do is you are going to pretend that your foot is a phone and you're making a phone call with your foot. So you're taking that foot up into your ear. When I do kids yoga, the kids will literally be like, ring, ring, hi mom, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> it's pretty silly. Okay, so you might be just here in this hip opener. Now, next thing you're gonna do, you're going to try to put your right knee around your shoulder like a backpack, okay? This is the point in the class where I say, if you're a beginner, you should maybe just watch. <laughs> really don't want you to hurt yourself. Right palm is gonna go alongside your hip. Left palm is gonna go alongside your hip. And now you're gonna take your left foot up, cross it on top of your right foot, okay? And this is where you get super strong and super brave and you're a risk taker. You're going to lift your bottom off the mat. And see if you can shift all the way forward. Stay for five, four, three, two, and then one. Oh, okay. 
And the, the crappy thing is about, about Zoom is I can't even see you guys, so I don't know how you did with that. You'll have to tell me after. <laughs> okay, let's try the opposite side. All right, so left foot, rock the baby. Rock, rock, rock. Baby's crying, and you're calming it down. And then if you want to call your daddy on the phone, if you call your mommy on the other side, make that phone call. <laughs> and now you're going to put on your backpack, Wah. anchor the palm, anchor the other one, bottom foot crosses over top. It's really important that you find the spine. And let's see if I can do it on my left side. Deep breath, get strong. Oh, shit, shoot. <laughs> okay, one, two, three. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, and then one. <sighs> okay, I've had enough of that. <sighs> if you want to take one last vinyasa or whatever you want to do, feel free to take it now. We're gonna come onto our backs. So we did a lot of binding, a lot of forward folding today in this class, a lot of like inward parking. Um, we're gonna do some heart opening now. So two options, if you just wanna take it into your bridge, your back problems, if you don't yet know how to do the wheel, if you're not ready for it, just lift your hips up, roll your shoulder blades under, and close your palms. And if you want to come all the way up into your full wheel, maybe you're there. It's kind of lengthening out through the spine, focusing on evenness, not depth. And then take one more breath all the way down, tuck your chin, release your back body, knees into the chest. All right, we're gonna cross the right thigh on top of the left now. Shift your hips over to the right. Drop your knees over to the left. This is called twisted root. It's a nice little twist. If it's too much for your body at all, just hook and stack your knees. Either or. And come all the way back through center. And we'll cross the other way. So I hope you guys are feeling really, really proud of yourself. Um, even just showing up is something to be proud of when our lives are like Groundhog's Day, that's one of, how one of my friends described it. Like literally every day you wake up and you do the same thing. You sit at your computer. Um, it can be really hard to motivate yourself to do something like Power Vinyasa too. So even just showing up, you should be proud of yourself. But Hope you're proud of yourself for, for what you accomplished during this class. Push yourself outside of your comfort zone. And then come all the way back into center, knees into the chest. If there is one or two last yoga poses that would seal off your personal practice, go for it. And then however you want to finish today, maybe you're in a Shavasana, maybe another pose is calling you. I'm gonna come all the way up to sit a little closer to you guys.
just want to share with you something that one of my favorite yoga teachers wrote this. says, there is a lesson in everything. There's something for us to learn in each situation. And the more difficult and uncomfortable that it is, the more that we need to learn. And yoga teaches us the valuable skill of what to do in these moments of difficulty. It's the hardest part of a pose might be lifting up. The foot wants to slide off the elbow. The weight on the arms feels unbearable. Maybe the collarbone is caving in. And what we need is the perfect mix of effort where effort is needed. Patience to wait for the body to open. Strength to stay the course through thousands of tries. And faith to believe that one day you'll do it. You can take this formula off of your yoga mat and into your life. You'll not only see success, you'll have a peace that sits so deeply in your heart. that nothing else will matter. in seated meditation, just stay. And if you're lying on your back, maybe you come up to join us.
we'll sit crisscross with our hands at our heart center and our spine lengthened and our chin tucked. And so we close with an intention. An ancient intention. That our yoga practice remain steady. And that our efforts on this path be continuous. and that our yoga serves and benefits all beings everywhere. May all beings be safe. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy and free. May the thoughts and actions of each of our lives contribute towards this. So if you want to join me in sealing the class with an ohm, we're going to inhale, exhale, and then inhale through to make the ohm. So take a breath in, and then a breath out, and a breath in. so much for for sharing the space and the practice for showing up and and being part of this community and and sharing your energy with with everyone who shares this practice together um shanti 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 peace namaste Full Life Practice.